the Fibber, McGee, and Molly Show. Every weekday at this time, NBC brings you Fibber, McGee, and Molly transcribed. The show is written by Phil Leslie and directed by Max Hutter. Fibber and Molly will be with you in a minute. Within the next 20 seconds, a fire will break out somewhere in the United States. Yes, there are 4,600 fires in America each day of the year. They kill 11,000 persons and disfigure or severely burn thousands more. The unfortunate part of this picture is that most of these fires could have been avoided. For example, 90% of all fires that start in the home can be traced to human carelessness. By obeying a few simple rules of fire prevention from now on, you and I can protect ourselves and our families from this devastating menace. Rule one is, don't smoke in bed or discard lighted cigarettes carelessly. Rule two, clean out old newspapers, magazines, and other inflammable debris. Rule three, promptly repair defective wiring as soon as you notice it. Rule four, use only those cleaning fluids which will not burn. And last but not least, be careful with matches. Keep them out of the reach of small children. Remember, it doesn't pay to gamble with fire. The odds are against you every time. Now, Mrs. McGee is down at the beauty shop this morning. The parakeet's in his cage in the living room. And Mr. McGee is curled up with the latest magazine, catching up on his scientific reading. And so, as the last space rustler bit the cosmic dust, our hero holsters his trusty ray gun took off his 10-gallon oxygen hat and wiped the radioactive sweat from his honest brow. <laughs> yeah, you like this, Buster? Well, this guy can really write, huh? Okay, listen now. And so, with peace restored to the space cattlemen of Jupiter Valley, Asteroid Rogers, space cowboy, mounted his faithful space horse and rode slowly westward into space. Boy, this stuff is really good. Hello, dearie, I'm home. Oh, hi, kiddo. What's the Christmas to go? <laughs> yes, Bertie, he'll take it down someday, I hope. Oh, that beauty parlor was busy today. How do you like my hair? Mm, oh, it looks swell. Yeah, I like it that way. I'm glad because we were too busy at the beauty parlor to do anything to it. Mm. I, I just had to get a manicure and come home. Oh, guess what happened? Oh, what? Did somebody mix concrete with a beauty clay and old lady Spradley went home with a paved push? No, no. This Don't is... tell me Madam Bertha turned the hairdryer too high and set fire to old man McDonald, the president of the Third National Bank's wife's league. Mrs. McDonald does not wear it. So much fascinating. So much fascinating. World City News comes out of that poor stall gossip stable. I never knew what to expect. <laughs> Between the mud they pack and the mud they swim. Okay, kiddo. So what happened? Well... I was talking to Mrs. McDonald down there, and you know that new musical show that's playing at the Civic Opera House this week? That South Atlantic from New York? Oh, yeah, that's a terrific show. They say it's completely sold out. Can't buy tickets at any time. Well, I'll tell you what. Mrs. McDonald had a ticket that they can't use tonight, and she suggested that I use it. Look, there's Joe. Okay, well, we'll have dinner out at the... Oh, 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 oh just one ticket, huh? Yes, yes. My first thought was maybe we could buy another one and go together, but you can't get them anywhere. And, uh, well, I do wish we had two tickets, but, uh... Ah, you go ahead and go, kiddo. I really wouldn't be interested in myself. I'd just rather, rather stay home and, and, and leave. So you don't mind me going? I mean... No, no, go ahead. You might enjoy it. I don't much like the idea of you being out at night by yourself. Like, you know, a lot of hold-ups and stuff going on. But if you don't mind... Oh, me... I forgot to tell you the rest of it. I ran into Doris Callahan in front of the library, mm -hmm. and I was telling her about it. And she and Dr. Gary have tickets for tonight, so they're going to pick me up here. Oh. Well, I suppose Doc would be the type of guy that he'd enjoy that type of show. Music and girls and stuff. Personally, I... Come in. Hi, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown. Oh, hello, Ricky. Come on in. Hello, sir. Aren't you supposed to be in school? Yeah, it's only 11 o'clock. You aren't out for lunch already. No. I'm about the rest of the day off, sort of. Oh? Mm-hmm. Miss Reagan, that's our teacher, she sent me more than two times. Uh-oh. Trouble, sir? Well, see, it wasn't real nice out, I betcha. Mm-hmm. No, 
You know, my sister, Danny, sister, and she ain't been on the blackboard by mistake, you see. By mistake? Sure. We thought she was out of the room, but she wasn't. Oh, that was a bad one. You shouldn't have done that to him. No, not without checking first. <laughs> that was a wonderful picture of her, too. Oh, I bet it was. Yeah, with that crisper eyes and four ears on it. Wow. And her hair looked like snakes. <laughs> and all the kids laughed like everything. Everybody laughed at Miss Ridley. Yeah, well, teachers are like that. Have you been home yet, dear? Not yet, Miss McGee. Our teacher says, I want both you children to go spend the rest of the day thinking about how naughty you're being. Mm. So Willie really Cook is going to think about it at the bee here, at the Western that night, because he's got a choir. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, I wondered if I could think about it at your house, Miss McGee. Well, I don't know, dear. Maybe you should... You sure, sure, sure. sure. Come on. Just to our school is out, Miss McGee, and I don't have any other kids because... I don't like to worry my dear mother, because my dear mother... I'll get it. The dean's resident. Who? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's here. Just a minute. It's your mother, Jeannie. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Hello, mother, dear. Yes, my darling mother, I'm coming right home, mother, dear. Hmm. You see, I just called you, huh? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, Mother dear. Goodbye. Bye, Mr. Miss McGee. It was nice knowing you. Ah, don't worry, Jimmy. Your mother. Maybe if I fall down and skin my knees on the way home and I come in crying, my leg is broken. Maybe she'll have pity on me. Mm-hmm. 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 More fun with the McGee shortly. There's an expression that goes, don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. And that's a very good expression to keep in mind now that income tax time is coming along. This year, there are going to be approximately 58 million Americans who will be required to file federal income tax returns with the Bureau of Internal Revenue. First of all, there may be some doubt in your mind as to whether you file an income tax return or not. Well, everyone, regardless of age, who had an income of $600 or more during the past year is required by law to file an income tax return before March the 15th. Here are a couple of other points that may help you. Be sure your return is complete and accurate. And be sure you sign it. If it's a joint return, be sure the taxpayer and his wife both sign their names. And most important of all, be sure to file your income tax return early. If you're entitled to a refund, you'll receive it a lot sooner. Remember... Don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today, especially you taxpayers. But McGee, Monica Miller thought New York, and she says it's a wonderful show. Well, New York and Whistle Vista are two different things. This is a road company. They don't use the same actors here that they use in New York at all, you know. Oh, that. I know that, but they must be good or they wouldn't be in the show because... Well, why worry about it? you got a free ticket, so go ahead and go. What can you lose, free ticket? Well, there are some wonderful songs in the show. I know that. Sure, great. I heard them all on the radio a dozen times. We heard Dinah Shore sing most of them last week, remember? True. And after I've heard Dinah sing a song, I can't get very excited over going to see some road company soprano with a cold from riding a draft to train trying to grab hold of a high note to keep ducking behind the rafters. Hmm. I don't know. You don't make it sound very exciting. Sergeant boy! Set them in the kitchen, Mr. Oldtimer. Yeah, well, you go right ahead and go. Go where, Johnny? To the show. What show? I'm going to see South Atlantic tonight, Mr. Oldtimer. Are you playing, kids? Bijou? No, no. Well, it's... me and Bessie, we're going to Bijou tonight. We'll come by and ride over with you, kids. We'll have a picnic. Well, no. You like to go and sit in the balconies, eat peanuts and soda holes over the railing. <laughs> You have a wonderful evening with our kids, kids. We're a panic. Yeah, but we're not going to... Bessie would like you and daughter there, Johnny, to be our guest for the peanuts. I'm trying to... You can buy the show tickets. We'll be there about uh, 7.15 so we can see two shows. Hey, hey, will you pipe down? We're not going to the BJ. Okay. I'll let Bessie buy the tickets. Uh, you see, Mr. Oldtimer, Mrs. McDonald gave me a ticket to see South Atlantic. It's a New York show. New York, huh? 
Well, you're on trip just to see a show, Donnie. Oh, we're not. Send me a postcard, will you, Johnny? I love New York. <laughs> like to go there sometime. Have fun, please. Goodbye. <laughs> Myers, we can do. Yeah, and did you hear that wind? It's turning cold out there. Good night. Stay home by the fire. I might just call Mort too. See if him and Mabel might come over and play some three hundred canasta with me. I sort of hate to go to this show without you tonight, dearie. But there was only some way to get another ticket. Ah, uh, that's not for me. Nice of you to feel that way, but I wouldn't be interested if we had six tickets. You'll enjoy it, though. Probably. Well, I thought I would at first, but. Well, I'll go get dinner. Another piece of pie, McGee? Some more coffee? No, I'm loaded. You better start getting dressed for the show, anyhow. Look, Molly, I, I don't want you sitting there in that silly opera house worrying about me being lonesome or anything tonight. Well, I, I know you don't mind me going. Because I phoned Morton. Him and Mabel are coming over at 8.30 to play Canasta. I'm going to build a fire in the fireplace and pop some popcorn and maybe make some hot buttered root beers and we'll just listen to the wind howl outside. And... McGee, hmm? I'm not going. What do you mean you're not going? I've been thinking about it and I wouldn't enjoy that show. I'm staying home. Are you, are you sure you don't want to go, Molly? Why, you might enjoy it. No, it's cold outside and I'd have to get all dressed up and, well, I'd rather stay home and play cards with you and the teachers. Well, frankly, kiddo, I think you made a wise decision. I think so, too. I didn't want to say anything because it was your ticket, but I felt all along that you wouldn't enjoy that show. I know I wouldn't. Boy, you couldn't drive me out of this house tonight with six horses with Lady Godiva sitting on each one of them, and... I'll get it. Seventy-nine West for Vista, Mom, and he's speaking. Oh, hello, Doris. I was just going to phone Dr. Gamble. Huh? Oh, he can't? Oh, what a shame. Who can't, Molly? Who can't what? Just a minute, Doris. Yeah. The doctor can't go tonight. He has an operation. Yeah. How's that, Doris? Oh, that's a nice thought, dear, but we had just decided to stay at home. You can get someone to use the ticket, can't you? Oh, uh, what ticket? Use what ticket? Can't Doc use his ticket? Do you want somebody to use Doc's ticket? Hi, uh, Scary. I can't hear. Huh? No, Doris. The dude was just saying we couldn't get him out of this house tonight. Well, hey, we'll go with it, you know. We'll both go. Give me the phone, will you? What? But... Uh, hello, hello, Doris. Yeah, we'd love to go, Doris. We'll pick you up in 20 minutes. Well, goodbye. But, McGee, the teacher, she said you were... Hurry up, Molly. Curtain time in half an hour. I'll run up and see. You write a note for Morton Mabel, and we'll leave it on the front door. I hear it's a great show, and I said... We'll say goodnight to Fibber and Molly in a moment. Again tomorrow, you'll hear the nation's top comedy entertainers with their own special brands of humor to keep you laughing all evening long when you set your radio dial to this same NBC station. Just listen to this list of top entertainers. There's Bob Hope, Bill Harris, and Alice Fay, Gertrude Berg, and, of course, Herber McGee and Bolly. When you add up this entertainment plus, you'll know why so many millions of radio listeners make NBC the place to stay on Friday. Bill Harris and Alice Fay furnish mirth and music to make their half-hour show one of the week's entertainment high spots. Listen and laugh at the antics of Elliot Lewis, Julia Sabruzio, Phil, and all the wonderful cast of comedy characters. And you'll also want to be in the audience tomorrow for the Bob Hope Show, featuring songs by Margaret Whiting and the music of Les Brown and his band of renown. Family comedy is the keynote of Gertrude Berg's new show, The House of Glass. It's an intriguing story of life in a hotel in the Catskills. Yes, you'll enjoy all of the programs sent your way via NBC every Friday evening. Well, kiddo, did you have a good time? Yes, good show. Yeah, good night. Good night, all. <laughs> NBC has brought you the Fibber McGee and Bolly program transcribed with Bill Thompson as the old timer. This is John Wald inviting you to be with us again tomorrow night for another visit with Fibber McGee and Bolly. <laughs>